So um, the strategy itself is really the job of the, the executive team to create that strategy. The strategy consists of the mission, the vision, the values, and the strategic imperatives of the organization. After that's all formulated, and that usually only happens about every five years or so that an organization takes a look at its strategy and so forth, with some of the organizations that are in faster paced um, um, industries, like technology, it changes so rapidly, organizations often have to look at their strategy every two or three years. So um, after that strategy itself is formulated, then the next level is for an organization to create goals. And goals are specific targets that an organization needs to hit in order to accomplish its strategic imperatives and work towards its mission, vision, and work in alignment with its values. Those goals are at the top level, and best practice organizations create goals in four different buckets or perspectives, and that's called the balanced scorecard. So the balanced scorecard consists of your financial goals, your customer service goals, your process goals, and your learning and innovation goals. And the reason that organizations, some organizations have implemented the balanced scorecard is so that they're not just looking at finances. The financial goals are typically what's called lagging measures. It tells you how you did in the past, not how your organization will do in the future. It shows what was my return on shareholder equity, what, what was the revenue last year or last quarter or last month. That doesn't mean it's going to be the same moving forward. Those have no predictive value or very little. Sometimes you can study trends in an organization, but those trends are impacted by the goals and the other perspectives. So how are you treating your customers? What innovative things are you doing with your customers to drive customer value and customer service? Those things will, when you analyze them, will say that if you're doing these things to improve your customer's experience, then most likely that will lead to better financial results in the future. So those goals are created and um, then they're cascaded throughout the organization. Now the way that works is that once the top level goals for the organization are created, then each functional unit or business unit will create their, their own balanced scorecard. So for example, sales will create their balanced scorecard based upon their contribution to the organization's balanced scorecard. So sales will have its own balanced scorecard that links and drives the execution of the corporate balanced scorecard. And then within sales, there's sometimes teams. There's the team of people that do your product demonstrations, maybe. There's a team of maybe field service representatives. There's a team of inside sales. Each of those teams then will create their own balanced scorecard based upon the department's balanced scorecard. So now it's cascaded to the next level down in the organization. From the team is when it usually goes to the individual level. Now granted, this is a very simplistic look at an organization's structure, only consisting of four layers, which we know that that's usually not the case, in larger organizations especially. But I, I do it that way so that you can see how the goals can cascade from the top level of the organization all the way down throughout the organization. So any questions about that? Because it ends up with the individual having goals linked to their team goals, which are linked to the department goals, which are linked to the organization's goals. So strategy gets developed top down and executed bottom up. And that's an important concept to know. Where the rubber meets the road, where organizations are successful or failing, has everything to do with what their people are doing. Um, I was actually listening to, um, I get books on audio, and I listen to them in my car on the way to work and, and so forth, because I don't have time to read as much as I'd like. And one of the books I'm listening to was saying that strategy is really the collective actions of each individual within the organization. So if you all worked at the same company, what you're doing and what you're doing and what you're doing and so forth throughout every person in the organization really comprises what the organization is in real life doing, regardless of what's on paper. In a lot of organizations that I've worked with, they've had a mission statement and a vision statement. 
they've had a set of values, and they're all platitudes right up on the wall for everyone to read and no one to do anything about. I mean, have you worked in an organization like that? It, it, it can be frustrating because you see this great vision. This is where you would love the organization to go, and you see every decision that they make at the senior level all the way down to the frontline supervisor level counter against that or fly in the face of that, so to speak. So it can be frustrating. So if people are the ones that actually are, are responsible for the execution of strategy, regardless of what level you're at, then um, what they do, their performance enables the execution of strategy and really people are the most competitive advantage that an organ the most important competitive advantage an organization can have. Let's take Toyota for example. Toyota actually opened up its facilities to outside companies including competitors to come in and tour the facilities to see how they do things. To see their processes, to see their methods, to see the tools and resources that they use. Why would they do that? One is that they're confident. Another is that they've been recognized time and time again for having best practices in terms of their, their processing, um, the process that they use for building cars and trucks and all types of vehicles. Why else would they do that? Couldn't a company go in and see what they're doing and replicate their process at their organization and beat them in the, in the market? Why aren't they afraid of that? Because they already people are better. Well, because that or no other organization has the people that th that Toyota has, and the people collectively comprise the culture, and the culture is both deliberate and it's kind of like um, that uh, the whole concept that we have, innate versus learned. The culture is both. It's it's part of what people join, but it's also part of what they influence every day at work. No other organization has the culture that, or, that Toyota has. So they're not worried because no one else has the people or the culture that Toyota has. That's why the process isn't that big of a deal to them. I mean, it's a big deal because that's how they live their life. But other organizations go back, they try to implement it, and it doesn't work because of, because of cultural issues. Because, oh, it wasn't done here, it wasn't invented here, it must not be worth anything. You know, that type of an attitude that some people have in an organization. So this slide right here, especially this bullet point here where performance enables the execution of strategy, that really excites me because that means that we are critically important to an organization. As talent management practitioners, we own people and the processes around people. So that is critically important to an organization. And when we can communicate with our senior leaders about how this all works, they will intuitively know how important talent management can be to an organization. So then, in taking a look a little bit deeper about the strategy piece, I really like this graphic. This is from the Strategy Focused Organization by Kaplan and Norton. Kaplan and Norton really came up with the balanced scorecard, but this really lays it out for me. Because it shows that at the very, very top is the mission, which is why do you exist as a business? And then you come down and you not only exist for a reason, but you operate in a certain way. Those are your core values. So what do we value as an organization? It says, what do we believe in? Um, and then, what's the vision? Where do we want to go in the future as we evolve as an organization? And then what's our strategy, our strategic imperatives? which is, what's our game plan? That's really the game plan of the organization. And notice a game plan is not a project plan. It's an overall, what are our strategic imperatives that will help us accomplish our vision, mission, and values. From there, the balanced scorecard is created, which really is a corporate measurement system that, that lends focus to key areas, key targets that need to be met as an organization.